great honor to be with everyone here uh, and thank you for taking the time. I'm, uh, I'm really humbled and really honored to be here with you guys. And, uh, and I'm so sorry that I don't get the chance to have the individual interviews with you, but um, I think we can do that some, some time later. So I came to Norway as three years old and we came to a place called Hammerfest in the north of Norway. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a saying that a lot of Tamils that came to Norway went to the north uh, to keep the fishing industry alive. Uh, and, and, and the Tamils are known for that. And it's, it's really, actually a really um, a great story. But my ma mom and dad, they wanted to move to uh, Oslo because they started a Tamil school and, and of course they wanted me to learn Tamil as well as Norwegian. So we moved to um, Oslo when I was uh, five years old. We came to a place called Grurudalen in the east of Oslo, which is the most diverse area in the whole country. And I will say that that has strengthened me because uh, growing up with maybe 200 different nationality has strengthen my character, strengthen my identity to be uh, along with and and having the identity with so many different people is, is something that I, I really appreciate and I really, I love for all people in the world to have the same experience, to be with different people and to grow up with different people. Uh, you learn to live the life differently and you see the life differently. Um, and I, I wouldn't live any other place in the world. And even when I bought a new apartment with my boyfriend, I bought it in, in the same area because I, I love this place. So when I uh, grew up and, and I became 15 years old, when you're 15, 16, 17 and 19, you go to senior high school. And I chose this very good school called Oslo Hamstein in the west side of Oslo. And the thing is that I didn't realize is that me growing up with this multicultural society made me proud and made me want to, you know, I thought the whole Norway was multicultural, but then I learned that the society was much more segregated than that. And not only with um, uh, the background, but also when it comes to economical background, that I came to the west side of Oslo and learned that here, people with a lot of money live here. And, and that's the first time I really learned differently about Oslo, that people grow up with different opportunities. And I would say that some of the thoughts and some of the experience the first months at the, the school um, would be some of the reason I want to engage in politics because politics starts in the, in the very little uh, cases, you know, it's, it's when you realize that this is not fair, this should be different. And uh, throughout the years at Oslo Hamskim, I uh, was following the war in Sri Lanka, uh, and and um, it, it, it you know escalated, and a lot of attention around that. And I uh, wanted to do something. I, I felt that I should do something. I should not just you know sit here. So I became active in something called Tamil Youth Organization. And what I did was to, you know, try to contact the Norwegian people, Norwegian media, to write about what's happening over there, that we should be aware of what's happening and that we should learn about what's happening over there. In this process, I kind of, you know, got to know myself. I, I became a bit more politically active. I learned that maybe uh, this was something for me, you know, that I wanted to work organizational and political. And I met Balasing Mioharaja, I met uh, the current governing mayor, uh, Raymond Johnson, in Oslo, and I met a lot of other politicians, and I read a lot of, you know, about ideology and politics, and I learned that I wanted to become a politician, and I wanted to become a politician in the Labour Party. And I ran for election for the first time in 2007. And I learned about uh, the climate change and the social inequality, the reason it's happening. Even though, you know, you, could, you can just tell that you have problems, but when you became politically active and you, you know, learn a lot about other people and how they work, and you learn that there are a lot of things you can do too. And, and even though I got elected in 2007, until 2015, Labour Party had only run the city for, um, haven't run the city for 18 years. Um, so uh, you have to come all the way to 2015 before we actually do have an impact uh, with our policy making in the city. 
So I start to work with how to get children into kindergarten early because it affects your way of learning when you get into school, how to make schools better, how to make sure that no matter where in the city you live, that you have the same access to education and uh, different kinds of sports and cultural activities for your children and for your youth. Uh, and all the work we've done in, uh, and, and especially uh, a lot of places in Oslo, a lot of people are outside working life. And what makes Norway great is that a lot of people work and they pay taxes. And that gives us the great and the strong welfare state that can take care of you when you cannot take care of yourself. Uh, and it creates equality, both economic, social, etc. Um, and we have uh, done so much uh, and, and I'm really uh, proud of that. Uh, I also have an international engagement that's towards gender equality. I'm very, uh, uh, that's, that's one of the things that I'm, you know, literally burned for is that I want women to participate, get over the glass ceiling and be uh, an equal part in every situation. I want every room to have half women and half men. So I've been engaged in something called Women Can Do It by uh, the Labour Party and the Norwegian People's Aid. I think some of you have heard of them because they uh, did some of the mine uh, work to you know, remove the mines uh, in Sri Lanka. Um, and Women Can Do This is a work where you um, uh, engage local women different all, are, all over the world. You know, I've been to Burma, uh, Myanmar, uh, Iraq, uh, Mozambique, Palestine, um, Georgia, in uh, East Europe to, to do this work, to, to uh, ask women to run for election. Now, I'm now um, uh, running for, I ran for the Norwegian parliament because I want to work with the two largest crises in the world is because of the climate change and increasing social inequality. Uh, and I think one of the most important job we can do to do some of those two things is to get people into the working life, into the green jobs. So I think that was a short I, why did I choose politics? I sort of feel that politics show, uh, chose me. <laughs> uh, I kind of were uh, at the right places, the right time, and it kind of got me engaged and, and made me realize that here is something I can do. Um, I'm saying that because growing up, you know, some of you are Tamils and Sinhalese, we upbring our children to not always speak up, right? Uh, we bring up our children to be good at education, activities, but we, we don't always engage our children to become politicians. That's not what we do. And so this was not an easy path for me. I, I chose um, politics because I just realized that I, I can actually do something here. Uh, and it took me a long time. I never ran for student council. I never spoke of my mind before I got to senior high school. And I um, I think that both meeting people, who, Tamil people who was in politics and meeting people who was engaged about the place I was from in Oslo, who told me that I have a voice and that voice has to be used is, is sort of my way into politics. And because of that, no matter when I meet people, uh, and I meet youth, I meet young people, and they are speaking about their, you know, uh, their concerns, to talk, speak about their places and where they're from, I always tell them, then you have a voice. You have to bring that voice up. And I see it as my uh, responsibility as a politician, that only do I have a responsibility to talk about their issues, but I also have to empower them so they can speak up about their issues as well and be their own leader. The diaspora. So what do I think about the diaspora? Um, I don't have the knowledge to speak about the diaspora all over the world. Uh, I think I know some people here and there, but it doesn't give me the right to speak about them. Uh, I think uh, the diaspora in Norway, the Norwegian Tamil society is the one I know uh, and the one I have a connection to. And I want to tell you that the Norwegian Tamil people what a hardworking people. They are so hardworking. They are so well known for their work ethic uh, and their contribution to the society. And the generation, uh, my generation, and the generation after me again, they are 
taking higher education, they are running to be leaders in uh, different, you know, um, sectors. So that's what, what I want to tell you about them is that Tamil, uh, Tamils in Norway, that's, that's, the, that's the society I know, they are super, super hardworking people. If I may come with one little small critique, I would say that they should engage their children to be more in politics because we need more people in politics. We need much more youth in politics who can speak up their mind and speak about different issues, whether it's gender equality, Sri Lanka, or other things that you, your heart uh, is really working for, you know, so, yeah. And then reconciliation. Um, I think there is no room for reconciliation before you let someone independent from the international society to investigate the war. The war must be investigated before uh, you can talk about reconciliation because it's about closure. Everyone wants the closure and it's about openness. And yes, it's about openness and transparency. And those two keywords are most important in democracy. So when it comes to reconciliation, I think that the Sri Lankan government have to let in independent uh, actors to investigate uh, war. Mm. What do you feel about the word war, Kamsi? You know, I never experienced war. I know that my mom had to, when I she was pregnant with me, I know that she had to run to churches and temples because they were bombing the areas. There's the stories I listened to. I know that my parents have been through a lot, but I cannot sit here and pretend that I have experienced war. All I know is that, historically speaking, because I, I'm not just gonna work with Sri Lanka, I'm gonna work internationally with a lot of issues. All I know historically is that people need to be given the same rights, the same opportunities to prevent war. And words are important. How we speak about each other, how we speak about different groups, and that groups are equal in the society, that's how you prevent war. But I don't know how to feel about war because I've never been in war, not that I'm aware. Um, yeah. A question from Sarminda Fernando, news editor, The Island, Sri Lanka. He has also sent many questions, but at least you have to answer the one question. Before yeah. your entry into Norwegian parliament this year, how many of those who had escaped Anders Breivik rampage in June 20, uh, 2011, uh, 2011, entered parliament in 2013 and years later? In addition to you, did any survivors enter parliament this year? Um how many of them? I yeah. think in 2013 there was one, in 2017 there was two, in 2021 there were six. Yes, mm. all right. So uh, I go forward speeding up. Uh, Kalem Bandara, Deputy Editor, Daily Mirror, asked uh, three questions. I go through that. As far as Sri Lanka is concerned, what kind of issues will you be raising in parliament over there? Do you wish to voice the concerns of Tamils? people here because of your ethnic origin, do you believe in a separate state for Tamils in Sri Lanka? Uh, I can start with the last question. Please, very brief. I have more questions also. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, when it comes to separate state, I, I don't understand why people ask us. I am a Norwegian citizen. I, I run to another country and uh, with my family and we start a new life. It's we should not have an opinion about how Tamils and Sinhalese and Muslims in Sri Lanka should live. It's their decision. They should make that decision. And when it comes to Tamil issues and Sri Lankan issues, I already said, I will uh, work to strengthen the partnership between Norway and Sri Lanka. And I will uh, continue to say that we should investigate the war crime. <clears throat> Next comes in, Panida Amrasagara, reporter Ceylon Today. Uh, he has also sent many questions, but I go with the two questions. What is your position 
Ottingen vis-a-vis UNHCR Resolution 46-1 and what lessons in, is in respect of multiculturalism can Sri Lanka learn from Mobile? Okay, the first, uh, I, first I one, haven't... What is your position? I uh, haven't... Vis-a-vis uh, UNHCR Resolution 46-1. Yeah, I haven't followed that, so I can't answer that. I'm so sorry. Uh, what? But uh, multiculturalism, I think that if you have different background, it shouldn't matter. You should have the same access to education, work, life, and anything else in the society. And and I think that uh, in Norway, we do have that. And I um, it's, it's the only way for us to uh, engage uh, equally. Uh, this election, we got uh, elected in 10 different backgrounds with people in, in the parliament with 169 representatives. Uh, Vietnamese, Somali, Sri Lankan. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of different uh, backgrounds and I, I'm very proud of that. Yisran Ratnam, please. Yisran Ratnam. Yes. Uh, hi, Kamzi. Uh, congrats firstly on, uh, on your election to the Norwegian parliament. Um, I'm uh, Isfran Ratnam, I'm from uh, the Daily Mirror newspaper in, in Sri Lanka. Um, uh, just listening to all the comments you made both in Tamil and in English, uh, since you spoke a lot on Sri Lanka, although you also emphasized the fact that you have been elected uh, by the Norwegian people to look at Norwegian issues. Um, and I'm just wondering, uh, considering that there's a lot of pressure on, on uh, the whole uh, ethnic conflict or you know pushing for a solution on the Sri Lankan issue, what sort of message would you be taking uh, to the Norwegian parliament? Would you be taking, uh, you know, would you be looking uh, to push Norway to uh, sort of get involved in this issue? Uh, and what would your message be? Thank you so much, Isfran. That's a very good question. So. Uh, the way we work is that it's not a individual work. It's not me going back to the parliament having opinion. In Norway, the parties are strong. The, the issues we want to speak up about, the issues we want to work with, we first take it to the parliament. No, so, so, sorry, sorry. We first take it to the party, the political party, uh, and we have a conversation about what is our stand together. And then the Labour Party uh, take it to the parliament. Uh, so. What I will do is that I will continue to, you know, speak with the foreign ministry when we get the new foreign minister uh, the next two weeks. Uh, and I will speak with them about how do you think, I want to learn about the partnership. I think there is a lot, I don't know. So I need to learn about how is the partnership. I will talk to the uh, ambassador in Colombo. I will, I will speak to different people who work with Sri Lanka and I will learn more. I want to know what works and what doesn't work because the partnership should be strong. I still believe that the war crime should be investigated because it's about openness uh, and, and that's all I have to say about that. And last uh, but not least, I think that whatever that the Sri Lankan people needs for living in Sri Lanka for their country, they should decide that. Uh, I think that I don't think it's a good development that you always wait for the international society to react first. We have an important job to contribute to the partnership, to contribute to the investigation, etc. But the future of Sri Lanka, it's in the hands of the Sri Lankan people. <laughs>